Okay, good afternoon everybody and welcome to today's webinar. Um, today we're, we're having um, we're talking about Ensemble tools. So my name is Emily Perry. I'm, I'm in charge of the Ensemble outreach team. So we deliver various kinds of training um, to do with, with using Ensemble, um, including in-person training, webinars like this, online courses, and we also um, handle the email help desk. Um, so if you ever email Ensemble, we're the people who will get back to you. Um, so I want to talk today about what Ensemble is. I want to talk about what tools are available um, and how to use those tools and also where to go for help and documentation. Um, so we're going to talk about the introduction to Ensemble. We're going to cover BLAST and BLAP for sequence searching. We're going to cover the assembly converter, which allows you to convert files between genome assemblies. The data slicer, which allows you to pull out sections of VCF and BAM files. Uh, file Chameleon for custom download of reference files and the Variant Effect Predictor, which is our most popular tool for analysing your own variation data. Um, so Ensemble is a genome browser and genome browsers are very useful um, for analysing genomes. Uh, genomes are large, uh, they consist of lots and lots of data um, and, and we're producing much, much, um, many, many more of them. Um, and when we produce a genome, this is what we're producing, just lines and lines of A's, T's, G's and C's, which are in themselves utterly meaningless. In order to make the data mean something, genome browsers are kind of working towards this. So the main sort of multi-species genome browsers out there are Ensemble, which is ourselves, UCSC and NTBI Map Viewer. Everyone has different preferences as to which one they, they like to use, um, just depending on usually which one they started using first or which one they've received a training on, things like that. Um, it doesn't seem to be much in it in a practical sense. So Ensemble have uh, many features. We have what we call gene builds for about 70 species. We produce gene trees. We have a regulatory build which incorporates data from sources such as ENCODE, Blueprint and uh, Roadmap Epigenomics. We have ways to look at variation data um, and we have the VEC tool. We have ways that you can display your own data. We have Biomark for data export. We have programmatic access via the, the APIs and we are completely open source. And we have the tools, which is what we're going to look at today. Um, you can access the data at different scales. So you can access genes and features and things one by one. You can access groups of them or you can access the whole genome at a time um, by accessing it at different, um, with different methods. So the main browser or the mobile site are only really suitable for looking one by one. The FTP site is only really suitable for looking at the whole genome. Biomart, the API, the REST API and the VET can be used for groups of data or one by one. And the Perl API and MySQL can look at all scales of data. Ensemble covers vertebrate species. Um, but we do have a few non-vertebrates in there. We have C. elegans, uh, Drosophila and um, Saccharomyces in there, partly for historical reasons and partly because we use them to anchor our gene trees. Um, and if you're interested in non-vertebrates, we have a sister site, which is EnsembleGenomes.org, which has five mini sites of different um, taxa that you can access. Um, just a bit of background on the differences between Ensemble and Ensemble genomes. Um, there's differences in the kinds of annotation and where you would find them. Um, we also have a release cycle. So our release came out um, today. Um, so hopefully everything is going to be working uh, when I do some demos. Um, so Ensemble 89, that came out today. And then um, our next release, over the next few months, we'll be pulling in things like new genome assemblies. We'll be doing software updates, uh, gene updates comparative genomics on new genes and genomes, updates to variation data, updates to regulation data, um, updates and um, new interfaces, and then in July we'll be bringing out Ensemble 90. Um, the reason we do this, we release everything in one go, is it means that it makes everything traceable. You can always um, go back to previous releases and find the old data. Um, so we're going to look at Ensemble tools today. So while the main Ensemble browser website is all sort of point and click, find information about a single gene, find information about a single variant, tools um, allow kind of further access to the data. They allow interpretation and processing of your own data, and they allow custom download of Ensemble data for further analysis, um, such as using them in, in external tools for analyzing your own data. 
So we're going to start with BLAST, um, BLAT for sequence searching. Um, so um, most people are familiar with BLAT. With BLAST, uh, BLAT is just BLAST-like alignment tool, so it's very similar. Um, and they allow you to find ensemble sequences that match your sequences. Um, so you can search for um, nucleotide sequences, protein sequences. Um, you can use short sequences. So um, we have special settings for things like primers, morpholinos, siRNAs, um, because these need slightly different um, parameters on the on the um, algorithms. You can search against genomic sequence, cDNA sequence, or protein sequence. So I've got a very quick hands-on um, using BLAST and BLAT. Before I start doing the hands-on, I'll just take a peek um, at the chat box and see if anybody... No, OK, I will carry on. So I'm going to do a quick demo um, using our, our BLAST. We've got a pair of primers for RT-PCR, which go against human BRCA2. I want to make sure that I don't have any non-specific hits that will mess up my PCR results. So the sequences are shown here. I can blast, um, so I can blast one sequence at a time, but I can also put in two sequences at once if I put them in this format um, that I've shown here. So I have the little arrow indicating that it's a header, and then forward for my forward primer, followed by the sequence. Then I have a couple of new lines, and I have again an arrow indicating that it's a header the name of my second sequence, which in this case is Rev to show reverse primer, and the sequence. So I could put anything, I could put gene names um, or anything like that as my titles um, for my sequences, so long as I put a little um, arrow on them. So I'm going to select this and copy it, and I'm going to go into the Ensemble Genome Browser at Ensemble.org, and I'm going to go into Blast slash Blat. Um, which is up here at the top. So this is my, my BLAST interface. I've got a box um, where I can paste in my sequences. I could also choose a file um, from my computer, um, but I'm just going to paste that in. And you can see that it automatically detected that there were two sequences added. Um, it can go up to 30 sequences, um, and I could get rid of one of these if I wanted to. But it's separated it into the two sequences. It's detected that it's DNA. If I'd have put protein sequence in, it would have detected that and, and put that there, unless you had some kind of weird, very um, amino acid limited protein sequence. Um, I'm going to search against a DNA database. So this is human, so I'm going to stick with that. I can change the species by going to add, remove species, and you can see that it's um, organized by taxonomy so that you can add um, your species. I'll just hit apply because I'm sticking with what I've got. And I can choose which database. Now, because I want to go, um, these are my RT-PCRs, I want to search against the cDNA database um, instead of the genomic sequence. Um, but you could see that I could also go against the protein database. It's picked BLAST-N for me as my search tool. Um, and I'm going to choose a search sensitivity of short sequences. Um, if I open up some of these um, sections here, such as the scoring options, um, if you're really sort of into BLAT parameters and BLAST parameters, you can alter um, these scoring options. You'll see if I switch um, to normal, some of these parameters will change. Um, okay, it's not obviously doing that. Um, Yes, if I go to distant homologies, you'll see the parameters change. Um, so it's worth kind of, if you're really into these, the different parameters, do fiddle with them and change them to what you want. But the short sequences um, and some of these should kind of cover everything that you're, um, you're looking for um, for most use cases. So now if I hit run, it gives me this, this jobs table, um, and the jobs table appears, you'll see this jobs table in all of the different tools um, that we look for. Every 10 seconds, the jobs table refreshes, and it, you can see it stores the two jobs as separately. It's telling me that they're currently um, running. I can save these jobs um, to my account, so you can set up Ensemble accounts. It's refreshed again for me. Um, Ensemble accounts are free, and nobody ever sends you any spam email. Um, and it allows you to do things like save jobs to your account. Um, I could also edit the jobs. Oh dear, they've failed. 
I am a little bit concerned that I may have some problems with my tools today because of this um, update to the tools. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit new job, I'm going to paste my data in again, and I'm going to hit run. This is um, a slight concern. The, the release wasn't planned for today, um, but it got delayed until today. So it is a bit of a danger that um, none of my none of my um, my tools, my jobs are going to work um, on the tool. So hopefully everything is going to go how I wanted it to. I will use this little delete ticket here um, to get rid of um, this failed job. Now these ones are running, fingers crossed, they will actually work. Otherwise I'm going to look very, very silly um, for the whole of this webinar potentially. Um, and they're still running. I'll just see if I've got any more questions. I do not yet. Okay, this is taking its time, so I might jump back to this um, and we'll take a look at the blast results um, after we've talked about no, after we've talked about our next um, section. So blast is a very very common tool. Um, you'll find it on lots of different databases. Um, assembly converter is something that you might find on one or two databases and it's used for when you've made data that you've mapped to an old genome assembly and you want to update your data to map it to a new one. Um, so what is a genome assembly? Well, there is currently no technology that's able to start at one end of a chromosome and sequence all the way along to the other end um, of the chromosome, giving us a perfect sequence of that, of that chromosome. All of the methods we currently have to produce genome assemblies involve um, splitting the genome up into short reads, sequencing the reads, and then matching them up um, in order to form an assembly. Um, in species like human, we have contigs. So the, the human genome is made up of, of um, pieces of, of sequence that were cloned um, into bacteria grown up and then sequenced with Sanger sequencing back as, as people did it then. And so each sequence will belong, um, or each of these contigs will belong to a particular individual. Some individuals um, feature over and over again through the genome, some um, are only found once, but you'll see they've got, they have sort of codes. So this um, person could have the code BL and you would know that any contig which had the name BL um, would come um, from her. Um, one of the, the things that goes wrong is reference alleles um, with the genome. So this individual who we got the sequence from might have um, a particular allele at a particular locus, which it turns out is very infrequent um, in the population. Another allele is, is much more frequent um, and might also be the ancestral allele found in all primates. And it might be that um, the allele that we have in this reference genome is one that causes a disease susceptibility. Um, and the question that is asked is, well, perhaps G should be the reference allele. Um, so what we might do in this case is we might replace this contig, or maybe just this short section of the contig, with a new one so that we would get a sequence which did have the G at this locus. Another thing that could happen is a gap in the genome. Um, so perhaps in between these two contig, there's a gap where there was uh, poor sequencing or no contig was ever cloned, we might want to fill in that gap with a new contig. The thing to note at this point is we don't necessarily know how long this gap is. Um, until we've sequenced the gap, the gap could be of any length. Um, and we can also have incorrectly assembled contigs. It could be that we've got these two um, the wrong way around. Perhaps if there was a repetitive sequence at these two ends that we might not um, might have matched up wrong. Um, so we produce new genome assemblies to fix errors um, in the genome. Um, this means remapping of all the genome features because a lot of these fixes may switch, um, maybe have, may change the position of things um, and change the length of things. That means that everything gets new coordinates. When we get a new assembly in, we'll stop updating the old one with sort of new genes and things like that. So if you want to use the up-to-date ensemble annotation, but you want to compare it to data that you have mapped to the old assembly, this is when you might want to convert your data. Um, so the assembly converter converts genome coordinates to a different genome assembly. 
It will work with BED, which is simple coordinates, GFF and GTF, which are the gene transcript and exon coordinates, um, WIG, which is values plotted against the genome, and VCF files, uh, which are variants. Um, so I'm going to convert a small BED file from the Human Genome Assembly GRCH37 to the more recent GRCH38. So here's our BED file. Let's just close that and see what happened to my BLAST. My BLAST worked. Right. Jumping back, we will have a look at the first BLAST result. So if I hit View Results, um, you can see that my top hit is bracket 2. It goes from 1 to 23 of the query, which is 23 bases long. Um, you can see that it's got 100% identity. The E value is 0 0.003 on this first hit. If we look at the E value for everything else, it's much, much higher. So we really trust this one hit. Um, I would say it's, it's highly likely that our, our PCR primer is only going to work here. We can get the sequence. We can go to the gene. Um, we can see the, the query sequence. What I'm going to show you is the alignment. Um, so here we can see that we've got 100% identity between our, our input sequence and this region um, of BRCA2 that it matches up to. Right, so let's go back. And I was going to show you how the assembly converter works. Let's just see. Ah, when you're working with the HLA region, which is very polymorphic, how sure would you be of a SNP or an indel? Um, so when we use the, the, the HLA region, um, we actually have patches um, and haplotypes on the HLA um, region. So what we would um, we would encourage people to map um, to, to call their SNPs um, and indels against the the um, the haplotypes that cover the HLA region, um, but I'm not really an expert on um, on variant calling. Um, I have not actually done it myself, so I would I don't know how exact you would need to be um, and what kind of parameters you would need to use with your caller. Right. Um, let's talk about assembly converter. So I'm going to select my bed file. I'm going to copy that, and now I'm going to visit tools. Um, so if I go to tools in this top blue bar of Ensemble. You can see I've got a list of some of the tools available here, and I'm going to go into Assembly Converter. Um, so this is human. It's already picked. Most people are going to be going for GRCH37 to GRCH38, but you can see I can do quite a few different um, assembly switches. I can go all the way back to, to NCBI34, which is a very um, old genome assembly. I think very few people would be using that now. Um, I can give my data a name. Um, webinar test. Ah, I hit return um, and that's why it gave me an error. It was being very clever. Again, I can choose um, a file or I can paste the data in. I can also provide a URL. Um, so if I had a really massive file that was stored on perhaps an FTP site, um, I could put the URL of that file in rather than, than downloading it and uploading it or, or pasting in the data. I'm now going to hit run. Um, so just as we saw with the, the BLAST BLAT, we have this table um, with the, showing me our, our different jobs, telling me that it's queued. Um, and this one bit was a very small job, so it's very quick. If I hit download results, um, you can see it's going to download this for me. I'm not going to actually download. I will download, actually. Um, and it doesn't know what to open a bed in. So we will open it in um, text edit. And you can see we've just got another bed file. Um, it's kept my um, labels in the same place, but it's different coordinates. Obviously, uh, larger jobs will take a lot longer. Um, no more questions. Okay, we will go back to the presentation and we'll talk about our next um, tool. So um, another tool we have is Data Slicer for Variants. Um, 
Whole genome VCF files are quite unwieldy. unwieldy. They can be um, many gigabytes of data. They contain all variants in the genome, and where there have been um, genotypes from individuals, um, it would contain all of the genotypes from individual, study, individual studies, which makes it a very, very large file. Um, sometimes you just want to analyze a small region and one population. So data slicer allows you to take a slice of a VCF and narrow it down to only individuals and populations of interest. This is a tool that we um, acquired um, from 1000 Genomes. So it used to be on the 1000 Genomes browser, which is now defunct. Um, they now point to, to Ensemble um, for that data. So it currently only accesses the 1000 Genomes data. It's currently only available for human and only on GRC H37 because that was what the data was for 1000 genomes because it's accessing um, their files directly. This is something we're looking in the future to, to expand out to further species um, and access other VCF files. So I'm going to get a VCF of a region containing the MC1R gene um, for the British population. So I've got the, I need the locus of the gene and I need the three letter code um, for the population I'm working with. The reason I've chosen this gene and this population is because this gene um, is responsible for red hair. Um, so we're likely to find that in um, British population more than any other. Um, find interesting variants, that is. So I'm going to just copy this um, set of coordinates. And now I'm going to go to the GRC H37 browser. So you'll see that this is the same as the other um, Ensemble browser, except this header is a slightly different color. Um, when I go into Tools, you'll see I have a few extra tools which we pulled out from um, 1000 Genomes. The Allele Frequency, VCF to PED, and Variation Pattern Finder um, all also came from um, 1000 Genomes. So if I go into Data Slicer, and um, so I can give my job a name again, I'm stuck with human, um, and I can choose to either get BAM files or VCF files. Um, we'll get different options when we use BAM than we do when we use VCF. I will show you. Um, I'll show you those options. So um, I'll select BAM now, and um, you have to pick the, the URL of the file you want. So you have to be familiar um, with the locations on the the thousand genomes. Um, um, FTP site. If you want to find these, I, I'll just show you where to get them. If you go to the um, Thousand Genomes site, which is internationalgenome.org, and you go to the data portal, you can um, search for individuals and you can go in there and you can find the, the URLs of different kinds of um, BAM files. So you could use them. Um, but I'm going to go with BCF. I'm going to paste in the region. Um, it does give you a clue here as to what the region um, lookup is, um, what format you want to put it in. And it's going to use um, phase three data. Um, you could also use phase one, um, or you could provide your own URL, but we can't guarantee that that will work as well. Um, so I'll pick the phase three, and I'm going to filter by populations and the one. And you'll see when I picked that, it gave me the list. The one I want is GBR. Um, if I pick by individuals, it asks me to enter, um, see now it's populating this list, it asks me to, to select the individuals from the drop down or enter them as comma separated. And I'm going to have to wait a moment um, while this populates it. I should not have clicked on that. Um, Just refresh this page. I think it will lose that form. Ha, ah, it did. Right, so I'm going to paste that in. I'm going to filter by populations and pick the GBR population. Now I hit run. Back to the same um, sort of jobs menu. Um, so it's currently queued. So this one might take a little bit of time. Um, if you are working with the, the GRCH37 site, um, if you have fixed data on GRCH37, got another failed job. This is probably down to this um, 
update. So I'll hit new job um, and put that in again. Um, Gina type file, okay. Um, let's try this again. Populations, GBR. Unfortunately, this is this is the the peril of um, trying to deliver a webinar on the day that we've just had a new release um, come out. It was not planned for today. Um, but as I was saying, if you're using, if you're still working with GRC H37 data, you do have the two options of either updating your data um, to to GRC H38 using the assembly converter, as I showed you or using this site at grch37.org. Um, it's failed for me again. It doesn't normally fail. Um, I'm just going to skip on and, it, and um, leave that because we could be ha here for hours. Um, but it would give you a VCF file that you can um, download. Okay, so we have, um, we have an FTP site which contains files of our complete database. Um, things like FASTA sequences, gene sets, variants, um, other things like that, and you can you can download these. Um, and a lot of people like to to use these complete files for things like um, analysing their their next generation sequencing data if they need a reference file. Um, and you can access the FTP site through your favourite FTP client, um, through the FTP site or the FTP downloads page. Um, the thing about the FTP site is the files are big, um, they're multiple megabase or um, megabyte or gigabyte, they can take lots of time to download or unzip, um, so it's always a good idea to make sure that the data you're downloading is really the data you need um, and it's the right file. Um, there is also a problem that while the files on the FTP site are in a standard format, um, different tools define the standards differently. Um, which you would think is not what standards are about, but um, unfortunately this is just the way things are. Um, so your NGS analysis tool might need files that are slightly different from the Ensemble formats. Um, so you might download um, the Ensemble FASTA file, try to use it in your, um, in your uh, RNA-seq analysis, and your tool says, no, I don't recognize that, that's not the data I need, I need it different in this way. Um, file Chameleon is a tool that allows you to make slight um, adjustments to your files. Um, so let's say I need um, a GFF3 file for um, my RNA-seq. I require UCSC chromosome naming like CHR1. So chromosomes um, can be formatted in these files so they're just a number, or they can be formatted so that they are CHR number. Um, some tools require only genes, uh, require a sort of maximum gene length. So cut out your, your ridiculous monsters like Titan. Um, and some require transcript IDs in every line. Um, so we can use File Chameleon to download these. Any more questions? OK, we have so many tools for manipulating BAM file, including SAM tools, BAM tools. Why would I go for Data Slicer? Um, absolutely. Um, SAM tools and BAM tools are very popular tools, and we absolutely recommend that you use them. Um, some people prefer to use a point-and-click interface. Um, so 1,000 genomes put in Data Slicer and we kind of took it from them um, because we realized that lots of people were email, um, emailing us and saying, I want to get this section, and then being absolutely terrified when we suggested to them they might want to use a command line tool. It's really that simple, um, which is why we, we introduced them. If you don't like using command line, you prefer a bit of point and click, use data slicer. If you're happy with the command line, then I think that samples and BAM tools provide um, a lot more options um, and are therefore much um, better in that perspective. Right, let's do my file chameleon. Um, so I'm going to go back to the Ensemble site and I'm going to go back to tools and I'm going to pick file chameleon. Um, and so I want cat. 
Um, so it's a really easy species select. You just type in um, and it will find it for you. Um, I can pick different file types that I want. Um, so I want GFF3. And it's not giving me the file naming option, which is weird. Um, but I will do my, my um, remove long genes. So I'm going to remove anything that's greater than four megabases. And I'm going to add transcript IDs. I'm going to hit run. And again, I go back to my standard jobs um, table. Um, and so it's queued. It's going to give me the file. This is going to be a massive file when I actually download it. Um, so I'm probably not going to download it and try and open it here because what usually happens when I try and open GFF files on my computer rather than manipulate them through a command line is it just shuts, doesn't do it and, and tells me off. Um, so there's no point in actually showing you what it looks like. But it works exactly the same as we've seen with previous tools. It will come up um, here by saying done and it will give me something that I can, um, I can download. You can see there's a bit of a theme that all of our tools try and work through a fairly unified interface um, as to what you can click on. So this does make it, um, once you're familiar with one of the tools, you should be able to use another tool. It's just a case of knowing what they do. Um, so rather than wait for that, I will hop on, just see if we have any more questions. No new ones. Um, and now I'm going to talk about our, our shining star, our um, most popular tool, which is the VEP. Um, so the VEP allows you to find out the effects of your own variants on ensemble genes. It allows you to analyze whole genome variant calls, and it allows you to filter variants to find those that might be interesting. Um, so you might get variant data in, in different ways. You might have um, simple coordinates. Um, something bounced at me. Um, is there a link of all FTP files or do I have to go to different sites? Um, so the FTP, if I just go back to this slide here, um, there is a shared in the materials box on the um, webinar interface. There is a link for these slides. There's a downloads page which lists all the FTP um, links for all the different species. Um, so you can go there um, and I'll also be emailing the, these slides out to you um, after the event so you will be able to find this link, uh, no need to try and scribble it down now. Right, let's go back to talking about the VIP. So, um, right, so you might have very data in, in different um, formats, you might have simple coordinates, um, you might have HGBS notation. Um, you might. This is the sort of thing you would commonly find in things like um, clinical reports um, and things like that. Uh, you might have a VCF if you've done whole genome variant calling. Um, you might have a VCF with millions of variants in it, um, or you might have a list of variant IDs. Um, I've got some examples here, but you you could have anywhere from one variant to millions of variants. Um, that you're analysing um, using um, the VEP. So we are talking multiple scales here. Um, so you might have small scale variants, you might have structural variants, um, and you want to know what the consequences they have are. So do they fall within coding regions or not? Um, are they synonymous or are they missense? Do they fall in splice sites, in UTRs? Um, do they fall in regulatory regions? All of these things you might want to know about the variants that you have identified, um, perhaps through your variant calling or um, pulled out of a paper that you've been reading, excuse me, something like that. Um, we use uh, sequence ontology consequence terms um, in Ensemble. There is a link here so you can um, look at what these mean in detail. Um, these are standard terms um, defined by sequence ontology. Um, we can also predict missense effects. So SIFT and polyphen are schools for changes in amino acid sequence. They're based on how well conserved um, the sequence is, the chemical change in the amino acid, um, the 3D structure and domains um, of the protein as well for polyphen. Um, a thing to point out is they are predictions, they are not facts, and they will never ever be as good as experimental validation. So 
um, sift and polyphen might tell you that um, the amino acid change is really bad, but actually in practice it, it the protein function is completely unaffected. Um, or it might it might tell you that the protein function is unaffected, but it it might turn out that the um, the amino acid you're looking at is is involved in a hydrogen bond with another um, amino acid which is no longer formed or something like that. Um, so both SIFT and polyphen give scores out of one. Um, the people who made SIFT and polyphen clearly did not talk to each other um, because the, they score opposite to each other. Um, so for SIFT, um, one means everything's perfectly fine, your protein works, nothing to worry about, and zero means your protein is completely destroyed and it's not going to do anything. Polyphen is exactly opposite, um, but they provide predictions along with the numbers, so you don't have to remember. I never remember um, which way around it is, um, so I always make use of the predictions. So the VEP is what you can use for this. Um, the VEP, I'm going to show you how to use the web interface because that's what we're talking about with the tools today. But just to point out, there is a standalone script um, that you can run. Um, it doesn't require any coding on your part, it's just a case of um, writing the commands into the command line um, and it is, the script is more suited to um, larger scale um, analyses. So you can put millions of variants into the web interface but it's going to take a really long time to run and in that case I would recommend using the standalone script um, instead. Um, we don't have variation data for all the species in Ensemble but every single one of them um, will work with the VEP. Um, so if you're using any species, it doesn't matter if there is known variation data or not. It's just comparing the variants to the genes. It, can, it will also compare it to the variants and say whether they exist or not. Um, but that's a bit of extra information. Um, and if you're working with a species that is not an ensemble, you, there is also the possibility of using the VEP. Um, and this is using a cache. So you can speed up the VEP script if you're using the, the, the online tool only works with the species we have in, in Ensemble, but if you're using um, the VEP script, you can use an offline cache. So this is basically um, a sort of set of files which provide all of the, the data that the VEP needs in order to do its analysis. Um, it makes the VET run much quicker for you. It's good for us because it means people are, um, we've got fewer people accessing our database, so it runs more quickly for, for everybody who's accessing the database. Um, there are pre-built caches available for ensemble species, and when you set up the VEP, um, it will give you options to download these. Um, or if you're using genomes that are not an ensemble, you can make your own if you've got a GTF and a FASTA file. So you could um, use it with your T-Rex if you had a T-Rex genome. Um, you can also use plugins which add extra functionality, may extend, filter or manipulate the output. Um, because they often make use of external data or code, they cannot always be relied upon and we're not completely responsible for the data you might get out of them, but they're available with both the web tool and the script. Um, so we're going to look at a set of four variants. This is a really short list, but as I said, you can put in millions. Um, find out what genes they hit, find out what effect they have on them. Oops. I'll just see if there are any more questions. Not for now. Oh, SIFT and PEN polyphen, do they work with protein generated through homologous method? Um, so both SIFT and polyphen do, um, they work with a, a database which um, SIFT and polyphen produce the, the list of um, proteins themselves and we, we pull in that data. Um, so we we actually pre-calculate SIFT and polyphen um, for all of the amino acid positions so that that makes it a lot quicker. This does mean that any updates to SIFT and polyphen may take a couple of, um, a little bit of time before they come through and that they appear in our, our data. Um, but if you go to the documentation, um, I'll just point you to the documentation. Um, if I go to help and documentation at the top here, I go for variation data, um, predicted data, and um, let's just go with SIFT. You can see here the versions that we've used um, and what reference protein database they've used through the for the homologs. Um, so you can see kind of what was used um, and when polyphen's only available um, for human. 
Right, so I'm going to go back up to the top of the page. I'm going to go back home. So I can go into Tools or I can use this link, um, VEP, here. And I'm going to hit Launch VEP. And I'm going to copy my list of variants. Um, and this is in human, so I'm not going to change it. Um, and I can either paste the data in, again, I can choose a file, or I can provide um, a file URL here as well. Um, there are different formats that you can put data in into the VET, um, and it's important that you get your, your um, data in the correct format. If you click on these examples here, it shows you the kind of data you can put in. So here's an example of the Ensemble default format. This is an example of, of VCF, although VCF would be a, the standard format you would get out of something like a, um, a variant caller. Um, variant identifiers is a list of things like RSs, RCVs, stuff like that, um, or HTVS annotation. Um, one thing I quite like to do if I'm not really sure about the, the format is I might paste my data in underneath. So I put in put up the um, example, I would paste my data underneath and then I would cross check to make sure that I'm in the correct format before deleting the example data. Um, this just means that I know that I've not done it wrong because it will give me an error message if I've done it wrong. So I've got a few, um, quite a few options that I can open up here. So I'll just open these different bits of option. This tells me what kind of identifiers um, I can show. Um, this is going to show me co-located variants and it's going to give me 1000 genomes allele frequencies. It's going to give me PubMed IDs um, for any papers that talk about those, the co-located variants. Um, flagged variants, we have some variants, um, so known. it's going to match up to, to known variants in the database. Some of them will be flagged as suspect. Um, so if you want to see the ones that have been flagged as suspect as well, you would click the tick here. There's a few extra options for like transcript quality um, and things like that. We've got the SIFT and Polyfen scores. Um, and at the bottom, we can do some filters as well. I'm going to leave all the options on the default and hit run. And we're going to get back to our oh so familiar table. Again, our job is queued. Um, a lot of these tools gave options to give our data a name. Um, when these things come up in the table, that's when it's really useful to have named data. That was nice and quick. So we're going to view results, um, and so we can see a lot of information about um, the variants we've looked at. So you can see we've got a summary of um, the consequences. Um, because the variants will have multiple transcripts of the gene, we have a lot more than four consequences. So you can see what these consequences are, whether they're missense or regulatory region. We can see which genes they've hit along with the ensemble IDs. These are links, so you can go and explore more. If I scroll across um, the table, you can see links to existing variants, although one of the variants here um, was not known in the database. Where we've got amino acid changes, these are listed, um, as well as the codons. Um, if I go across further, again, we've got the, for the missense variants, we've got the sift and polyphen. Where they're known variants, uh, we've got allele frequencies um, in 1,000 genomes and in EXAC. Um, and we know that some of these have been associated with a phenotype or a disease. We've got a PubMed ID for papers. And um, if it had fallen in a transcription factor binding motif, we'd have information here. Um, I can filter these data so I can say I'm interested in consequence missense. And I say missense variant, and now it narrows it down. Um, so I can just see the missense variant. Um, I can download these data, or I can put them into um, Biomart as well, um, which is um, a tool that we would probably cover in a, a might cover in a separate web webinar at some point um, for looking at variants um, for analysing large scale data. Okay. No new questions, so we will hop back into the presentation. So the VEP is a really useful tool and it is our most popular tool. If you're interested in further Ensemble webinars, we have a REST API um, webinar. 
Um, we can also host and um, teach ensemble courses at your institute. Um, we'll charge you for, we ask um, hosts to pay for trainers expenses, but otherwise there's no fee. If you're interested in any kind of courses, um, we can do browser courses or REST API courses. Um, please email us, um, helpdesk at ensemble.org. If you go to training.ensemble.org, you'll see some examples of our training materials um, and descriptions of some of the courses that we offer. We also have tons of help and documentation available. Um, if you haven't been there already, I strongly recommend EBI Train Online for training courses on various um, aspects of bioinformatics, as well as EBI resources. We have a tutorials page. Um, we have a YouTube channel um, and also a UQ channel where you can um, view short tutorial videos. And you can email us. We are helpdesk at ensemble.org for any questions relating to anything um, ensemble related. You can also follow us via social media. We have a Facebook account, a Twitter account, um, and we have a blog um, where we talk about kind of a bit of background on maybe some of the updates to Ensemble, about um, some of the background on, on the team and where we came from, um, and some of the events we're taking part in. We also have publications. Please cite our publications if you use um, our data. And these are um, the people who work in Ensemble um, and the, the, um, our generous funders, um, without whom we wouldn't be able to produce uh, the Ensemble website, any of the tools that we have, or even um, any of the training that we're able to um, deliver.